welcome to worship on this fourth Sunday of Easter that is also serving as our California Lutheran High School Sunday. We'll take a look at all of the gifts the Lord has given to the church. Uh, the main one for today being our school system in which the Lord gives us the ability to pass on the message that he has given to us on to the next generation. So we'll be celebrating that uh, in our worship as well as um, in, our, in our sermon. Let's begin this service in our God's name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin, for faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do. You should cast me away from your presence forever, O Lord. I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in our sin. Hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. O God, you are the giver of everything good. In the midst of the sorrows and fears of this life, give to us the peace that comes from the assurance that in Christ you calm our sorrows and still our fears, who lives and rules with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading for this morning will be from Acts chapter 4, verse 23 to 33. We see that even though the disciples see the, the, powers rage, uh, the powers of this world rage against their God, they don't complain, they're not worried, they just trust in their good shepherd. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you appointed. They did, they did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant Jesus. After they had prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God boldly. All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions were, was their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and God's grace was so powerfully at work in all of them. This is the word of our Lord. We'll continue with the psalm of the day, Psalm 71, that will also serve as the basis for our sermon today. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. In you, O Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Turn your ear to me and save me. Be my rock of refuge to which I can always go. For you are my rock and my fortress. Since my youth, O God, you have taught me. And to this day I declare your marvelous deeds. Even when I am old and gray, do not forsake me, O God, till I declare the power, your power to the next generation, your might to all who are to come. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Alleluia. Our gospel for this morning is taken from John chapter 10, verses 11 through 18. Here we see Jesus as our good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. 
The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay my life, lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. This is the gospel of our Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word sticks with people. On April 17th, 2021, Hester Long, the oldest woman living in the United States, passed away at the ripe age of around 115. 115. The woman that was born during the presidency of Teddy Roosevelt, the woman who had seen 20 sitting presidents, who saw the Titanic sink to, sank and lived through not one world war, but two world wars, passed away in North Carolina. Could you imagine all of the incredible stories that she must have been able to tell? Having seen so much of this country's history, I'm sure she was able to tell so many different stories because of her wonderful wealth of experiences. But as she got older and as she struggled with uh, loss of memory, I'm sure the storytelling became a little more difficult. Stories became a little more foggy. The storytelling maybe became a, a little less vivid and some of those stories just went away altogether. But one thing stuck around. It's noted that all the way up until very close to the day that she died, she was able to recite Psalm 23 from memory and with gusto. The Lord is my shepherd. It's pretty incredible that the word would abide with somebody for so long. But while all sorts of things in this world, almost everything in this world fades away, we know that there is one thing that doesn't, and that's the word of God. And in Psalm 71 today, we hear the psalmist talking about that, how when he was young, he had been taught something that stuck with him well into when he was an older man. Psalm 71 falls right at the end of this Davidic collection of psalms. So it's pretty safe to say that this is a psalm of David, even though it's not explicitly said so. You see, it makes sense that David would be giving this psalm as he talks about, as he reflects on all of the things that the Lord had done in his life in order to bring him to that point where he was an older man. And he says, since my youth, God, you have taught me. God had been teaching David all sorts of things in all sorts of ways throughout his life. He had used many blessings throughout David's life in order to show that he cared for him. He showed him, he taught to him the surprising nature of his grace when he chose David from all of the brothers as the youngest of his brothers when he chose David to be the king. He showed David that he should trust in him always as he was with David and allowed him to conquer that giant Goliath. And he showed, taught to David the incredible importance and value of Christian brotherhood on this earth as he used Jonathan in order to keep David safe from King Saul. He'd used all these wonderful experiences in David's life in order to teach him so many things, but he also used the bad. David 
had decided to take a census of the people in his land in order to see what great army he had amassed. And God sent a plague to the land in order to show David that the power didn't come from his mighty army, army but instead came from God himself. David was often a neglectful parent. And so God allowed David's sons to rise up and rebel against him, causing a bunch of different problems in David's home life as well as in his kingdom. And finally, the sin that all of us know about David when, when he committed adultery with Bathsheba and killed Uriah, God used that in order to show King David that yes, even kings can fall, but that God's mercy and abiding grace never changes. Throughout his life, God had shown to David that changeless message that for all the times that he would fall, the grace of God was always there to pick him back up. And we see God do the same thing in our lives too, right? We receive a wealth of blessings in this life and look around and go, certainly God cares about me. But then we also look around and see the, the damage that our sin does to our own life. We see the consequences of it and we learn things as a result of it. God uses both the good and the evil in our lives in order to teach us things as well. After uh, David had sinned and when Nathan confronts him, we hear in 2 Samuel that, that interaction between the two. It says, Then David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, The Lord also has taken away your sins. You shall not die. The Lord used other people in David's life in order to share with him that unchanging message of forgiveness. And he does the same thing in our lives as well. When we hit those low points, when we look around and think that no one, not, not our family, not our friends, not our church, and not our God could possibly want to stand by us, that's when our Lord delivers to us the same message that David had received. In Psalm 103, we're told, For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. That's the message that David had received when he was young, that stuck with him till he was older. And it's the same message that abides with us throughout the days of our lives as well. In verse 18, David begs the Lord not to forsake him in his old age. And if there's one thing I've heard many, many times here at Beautiful Savior from, from several different members, it's this. Vicar Crass, whatever you do, don't get old. Easier said than done, right? Because it's no secret that as we get older, some things become just a little bit more challenging. With those years of wisdom often accompany aches, and pains. Loneliness has an anticipation to set in. It becomes more difficult to do day-to-day -day tasks. Hospital visits and doctor visits and inconvenience become, uh, inconveniences become more and more frequent. And you know what? That doesn't just go for our senior citizens around here. No, that goes for just about anybody as years tick by. Health scares become a little bit more serious. The relationships that maybe we've broken in our past and the guilt that we have from them becomes a little bit more intense as the years go by and those relationships get just a little bit more icy. We see this world change around us and we feel that, that it's shifting underneath our feet. We look at our lives and we see such great change and often not for the better. And we start to wonder, God, have you changed? Have you changed the way that you're dealing with me? Should I expect you to, to, to have some type of different uh, behavior towards me in the future? 
Do we find ourselves wanting to pray with King David and beg our Lord, please do not forsake us? Well, David knew that the Lord's grace wasn't going anywhere. He had seen God's grace abide with him throughout all of those difficult times that we had talked about earlier in the sermon. And we see that in our lives as well. That through thick and thin, our Savior does not change. In fact, Hebrews tells us as much when, he sa- when it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. That's something we can take to the bank. If God is with you today, he's going to abide with you tomorrow, and he's going to abide with you forever. That's something that's not going to change. It's that wonderful message that we received when we're young, and it's not going to fade as we get older, even if it might feel like it does. We don't have to worry about God forsaking us. If anything, we should be worried about us forsaking God. But through his word, he keeps us close and promises through his unchanging message that he will abide with us today, tomorrow, and forever. It's interesting the way that that Psalm 71 verse 18 is phrased. It says, God, do not forsake me until I declare your strength to this generation, your power to all who are to come. Did you hear that? Did you hear that word, until? David says that, God, even if you are going to forsake me, which he wasn't going to do, but God, even if you are going to forsake me, at least please wait until after I have had an opportunity to take that unchanging message that you've given to me and pass it on to the next generation. Just let me carry out your work of spreading your word. It's a pretty unselfish attitude. It's an attitude that puts self second compared to the work of the kingdom of God. Is that a selfless attitude that you and I can imitate? Is it a selfless attitude that we can carry into our lives? What about as we approach our church lives? Do we look around and see all sorts of ways in which we can serve, but if it doesn't fall into what we want to do, if we're not allowed to serve Jesus on our terms, do we turn our noses up at it and say, you know what, I don't think I want to do that. When things don't go our way in our lives of service, do we just give up? Do we stop wanting to serve? Or do we say, Jesus, just give me the opportunity to spread your word and then we carry out acts of service wherever we possibly can. The Holy Spirit worked in our hearts in order to bring us that changeless message and then he took it and he imprinted it deep on our hearts so that it would abide with us forever. And the joy that we have in that work of the Holy Spirit, that is what takes us and moves us to carry that message on from generation to generation so that no one would be without that message of forgiveness that Jesus provides. California Lutheran High School has been around for 40 years and it has carried one purpose for all 40 years. And that's to pass that changeless message on from generation to generation. It's to do the exact same work that David is talking about in Psalm 71. That's the purpose of California Lutheran High Schools and some of our other Synod High Schools and Martin Luther College where we, sent, where we get our teachers from and Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary where we get our pastors from. They all have that same message, not just to equip servants to know who their Savior is, but to instill and invigorate them a zeal to take that message on to the generations after them as well. This Sunday, we'll hear some hymns put together by the students at California Lutheran High School. And it's our prayer 
that in 40 and 50 years when when a lot of us are gone and when the students that sang those songs have gray hair on their heads as well that their main goal in this life is what ours should be to take that message of the truths of the gospel and take it to the generations after that the teachers up at that school in Wildemar take the truth and bring it to these these young minds who are about to go out into this world and face all sorts of challenges and it's a great privilege that we have to support the work that is being done there through our students and through our offerings and through our prayers it's a wonderful thing to be able to see the Holy Spirit work to expand his kingdom through young people such as those. Throughout the history of the world, the message of God's word has been passed on from generation to generation. In the Old Testament, we see that it was written down, but that it was also given verbally. Older people would tell the younger people what the Lord had done for them. The hymn, the famous hymn, God's Word is Our Great Heritage, sums that work up pretty well. It says, God's Word is our great heritage and shall be ours forever. To spread its light from age to age shall be our chief endeavor. Through life it guides our way, in death it is our stay. Lord, grant while worlds endure, we keep its teachings pure throughout all generations. To spread its light from age to age shall be our chief endeavor. That's the chief endeavor of Carlsbad Christian Academy as we get to see firsthand the Holy Spirit work deep in the hearts of four-year-olds. That's that chief endeavor of California Lutheran High School as the teachers there use God's word in order to prepare those students for a lifetime of service to their Savior. And it's the chief endeavor of all of us in our homes as we take our children and our grandchildren by the hand and lead them to our Savior through the word. King David marveled at the opportunity to take those wondrous deeds that had been done for for him by Christ and be able to take them to the next generation. Let that be our work. Let that be our chief endeavor. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, may it guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We'll continue by confessing the words of the Nicene Creed in order to express our common Christian faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And we'll continue by praying the prayer of the church. O Lord, you have revealed your good and gracious will to your people on earth. Forgive us for pursuing that knowledge that serves only our selfish desires 
and for using what we have learned to exploit and hurt others. Cleanse our guilty hearts of the apathy we feel for searching out the deeper truths of your word. Holy Spirit, hear our prayer that we may put aside, put self aside and rejoice in the truth that builds up. Heavenly Father, send the Spirit of Jesus into our hearts so that like the Bereans of old, we eager, eagerly learn of you. As the deer pants for streams of water, may we be instilled with a longing to explore the mysteries of your grace. Holy Spirit, increase in us the knowledge of your truth. As you sent your Son among us, as the Word made flesh, so bless the efforts of schools, colleges, and seminaries to train those who proclaim your presence among us in word and sacrament. Holy Spirit, instill in us a desire to teach others the wisdom of your ways. God of light, give to the church renewed wisdom and fresh understanding that the message of your salvation may shine ever brighter in this dark age. Holy Spirit, Kindle in us the fire of your love, so that others may see our good deeds and praise our Father in heaven. And hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Holy Spirit, renew the face of the earth so that at the name of Jesus, every knee may bow. May your peace, which transcends all understanding, guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. And we'll pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thanks for worshiping with us. Just a few announcements as we head into this new week. First, I'm sure many of us have already heard, but just for the sake to make sure that, uh, that everyone knows, uh, Pastor Chris Schrader did accept the call to serve as beautiful Savior's pastor. Uh, his, the installation date is set for May 30th, and so we can look forward to that and, and more details will, will follow concerning the installation. His wife, Cara Schrader, accepted the call to serve as our TK kindergarten teacher. And Miss Emily Gladowski of Florida accepted the call to serve as our first and second grade teacher. It's one of those moments where we, sh uh, we retake this opportunity uh, to praise our God from whom all blessings flow. Uh, what a wonderful thing it is that he's now filled all of those calls uh, and we have a full staff ready to go out into the harvest fields of Carlsbad and serve our Savior boldly. Also, uh, next week, May 2nd, we do have the confirmation of Kevin Henschel, Ella Riggs, and Jacob Tellefson. Uh, that'll be the 1030 service, uh, so if you'd like to come and support them and see, uh, see how the Lord has blessed them as they've learned over these years and years and years, um, all of these wondrous things uh, throughout their youth, they've learned all of the wonderful things that their Lord has done for them. Uh, please come next, uh, next Sunday, May 2nd, in order to, uh, to support them and see them uh, confirmed. Uh, and finally, we are discontinuing the Monday evening service uh, because of the, the lack of necessity for it now that we don't need a, a spillover service because of capacity rules or anything like that. We're going to discontinue it. So we'll continue to have the 8 o'clock and 1030 service with Bible class in between uh, from, from this Sunday and forward. Those are the announcements for the week. God bless your week of service to your Savior. Christ is the world's light, Christ and none other, born in a darkness, 